indeed. I mean, I'm trying to work out. I think the band that got me into metal, um, probably a mixture of Black Sabbath and uh, First Guns N' Roses album back in the day. Really? Yeah. Now, see, I got, I got introduced to Guns N' Roses, uh, or not Guns N' Roses, I mean Black Sabbath, <laughs> a little while later. Well, I, you know, I, I got, I'll, I'll tell you my Guns N' Roses story, too. But um, I got introduced to Black Sabbath because uh, a, a neighbor of ours across the street, he was like 10 years older than me. So maybe like my brother was three years older than me. So yeah, he's a few years older than my older brother. So he's kind of like our big brother too, you know. And he liked Kiss, but we were just obsessed with Kiss. It was Kiss, 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 you know. And uh, and I'll remember because my brother he got alive, and then he bought Destroyer and Rock and Roll Over. So I remember Kisteria very vividly. I mean, I was just a little kid, but I remember it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, what a great time to be a fan, but. We were just obsessed with Kiss, and we were just driving Kevin fucking crazy. So he's like, guys, there are other fucking bands besides <laughs> Kiss. So he introduced us to Sabbath and Zeppelin and Alice Cooper and Rush and ACDC and all these, you know, Judas Priest and all these amazing, you know, 70s metal bands, hard rock metal bands. And, and you know, I know it's a point of contention because some people go, oh, well, Kiss aren't metal. I beg to differ. I think they're early American metal. Yeah. That's just... The I mean, first, yeah, the first few look, albums, yeah. yeah. But you've got to look at the times, yeah. You've got to look at the times. I mean, another thing, and there was a difference between American metal and UK or European metal. UK metal was very much mostly about doom and gloom, and, you know... Because we're such a happy a bunch. Of, <laughs> a lot of mysticism, too, like with, with Led Zeppelin, you know, there was a lot of mysticism and stuff like that. With American metal, it's about fucking fast cars and hot chicks and drugs. I mean, Kiss to me, if, if Sabbath epitomized gloom and doom, Kiss epitomized sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And Van Halen, too, by a certain extent. I mean, they were the same way. They didn't sing about... Very rarely did they ever sing about anything doomy and gloomy. It's about, again, fast cars and hot chicks and getting laid and getting fucked up. And, you know, and that... and. And when you listen to Kiss, man, I mean, especially, like you said, the early shit, Parasite, Strange Ways, Watching You, a lot of, I mean, especially the, the alive versions of those songs. I mean, fuck, man, Deuce, 1975, in my opinion, yeah, I consider them early American metal. Early American. And I'm stressing early. You know, <laughs> is it metal by today's standards? Well, no. No. But you got to remember the context of the times. You know, it's like, Sam Dunn said it himself when he did that Metal Evolution. He did a whole yeah. episode on early U.S. metal. He said, you can't talk about early U.S. metal without talking about Kiss. And I agree. I agree. I mean, you know, like I said, yeah, again, eventually they strayed away from that. Sure they did. But I, I would argue, I mean, shit, man. Dr. Love, a lot of those songs were heavy for the time. I mean, again, you got to look at what was going on, you know, especially here in the States. Which I mean, I can't really speak for because obviously I'm in the UK. <laughs> right, but you know, if you look at if you look at what was going on, I mean, Kiss were one of the loudest fucking bands around the, the, that era. They took pride in being that band, you know. And uh, I mean, like I said, the wheels eventually came off. We all know what happened to Kiss. Yeah, right? yeah, and we also know about uh, what happened with Gene over the last few months and the. Ownership of the horns, but anyway. <laughs> you know what? Though? I think he just did that for publicity. I think I you mean, are on that. I, I think yeah, you are on that. Let's be honest. Re like realistically, do you really think he was going to be able to do that? Not in a million I mean, years. The Dio state. Right, goddamn hand gesture. Exactly. For real. Although I mean, I I that motherfucker sitting back and laughing at all the free publicity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but while we're on the uh, subject. Natalie and Joe, what were the bands that got you into the metal? Oh, oh God. Well, when... To when I properly got into it, I'd say it was the new metal waves, stuff like Slipknot, System of a Down. <laughs> Unfortunately, at the time, Papa Roach. Um, <laughs> Papa I, Roach is a weird yeah. one, because they were one of the bands that I would never have been able to tell you at the time would still be going 17 years later. Yeah, <laughs> when they announced they was releasing their new album this year, which, don't listen to it, it's awful. <laughs> um, it shocked me, but um, but if we're going really young, 
my nan used to um well one of the first ever presents I remember was um my nan giving me her copy of Slayer's very first album uh, as a hand me down. That's that's the kind of hand me down you want, really. <laughs> it was amazing. I still got that copy lying around. It's never going away. No, definitely not, man. It's probably you know it's it's an awesome album in itself, anyway. But um, yeah, that's you said it was the first Slayer album, Show No Mercy. That's the name, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I heard that record. I freaked out. <laughs> you gotta remember again, 1983, bro. All right, I, mean, that... I was just a kid, and uh, my bu- my buddy, my brother's buddy, came over. And he had Kill 'Em All, and he had fucking Slayer Show No Mercy. Now, I was really more into the traditional metal at that point in time. And to be honest with you, I didn't care for Slayer or Metallica when I first heard it. It was just too much. You know what I mean? It was like, what in the fuck is this shit? Now, you know, I would say within a year, though, I, I, once I understood it and I got it, I got it, and I was all about thrash metal. But, yeah, I got to be honest with you, the first time I heard them, I was just like, I mean, my first... Yeah, like I said, that was my first exposure to thrash metal was those two records. And it yep. fucking melted my brain, man. I was like, whoa, what is this new sound I have to take in? I don't know if I like this or not. <laughs> yeah, it, you know? it, blew my, my, it blew my poor little four-year-old, bri- four-year-old brain away. <laughs> English, I, I English. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, see, you experienced what I experienced with Kiss, but god damn, man, Slayer at four? Jesus yeah. Christ, dude. But, um, so that was it was either that or with my name it was either Slayer or Motorhead that she used to play me all the time so that was my very first gateway you nice. had one of the coolest nans I've ever heard of Jesus <laughs> <laughs> she is an amazing nan and I'm going to meet her for the first time in September so I really can't wait <laughs> <laughs> that's when she's got to pull out the obituary and Cannibal Corpse records next <laughs> that will shock me that one <laughs> Hello, no, no, Slayer, man. It's not far off. It's on its way. So <laughs> and Natalie, the band that got you into metal. Oh, God. Um, ooh. I think I think if we have to go all the way back to what first got me into like rock or metal was back when my mum uh, showed me Meatloaf. Um, and you ran away and screaming then... from him? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually quite enjoyed me at life, and I was really, really young at the time as well. At, well, at the time, at the time, like, in the early 90s and that, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. you couldn't was, escape um, him. You couldn't escape him, so... Yeah. Uh, he's, he's still trying to go strong, isn't he? <laughs> um, I, I think so. It's like, um, I know you brought it up earlier, the, um, not, not Avatarian, that's a different band. Um, oh, what was the band? The singer of Egg Guys formed it. That he, Joe said he introduced you to. Oh, Avantasia. Yeah, Avantasia. Thank you. I know the first, like the first single from that, "Mystery of a Blood Red Rose," was originally written for Meatloaf, which is why the song sounds like a Meatloaf song without Meatloaf vocals. Yeah, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I yeah. remember about that. But yeah, no, um, I sort of moved on to like uh, Papa Roach and Slipknot, and then my friend introduced me to Children of Bodem, Demiurgia, and then um, I moved on to. So I'm just going to ask, with the sounds in the background, is like, is Jode having a sex wee or something? He's he's literally having like an orgasm like right next to him. I'm not even touching him. My favourite band just got named Children of Bodem and Demiurgia. Yeah, no. I, I, it just all went went from there, really. <laughs> what his orgasm, or you know, <laughs> everything, everything. But yeah, no, like I really, really enjoyed Slipknot for a long time, and then I moved did, on to more and more. With Slipknot, I loved them up until All Hope Is Gone. Then mm-hmm. that album didn't do much for me, and the newest album hasn't done much for me I, either. I, so I like I like quite a few of the songs from the new album, but not all of it, you know. Same with It All Hope Is Gone. I liked probably three songs from the new album. Yeah. But I can't listen to it a lot like um, their first three albums. Yeah, their first three albums are actually also. I mean, a lot, I know a lot of people got put off by the third album, but because by that at that point I was used to experimental stuff being the big old Radiohead 
fan that I am, and them being all weird and shit anyway, <laughs> and I was I was ready for it. So when they come out I'm, with it, I'm it's like really yeah. big fan of their third album. So I'm a really big fan of their third album. It is good. It doesn't get as much praise as I feel it deserves. To be honest with you, um, no, it's very updated. It really is. It's a shame they don't bring back more of the songs for playing live. But I've only seen them live once, and that was. Brixton Academy, uh, 1999, uh, wow. first UK tour. They were supported, the supports though were even, were amazing as well. Well, they were for me at the time. It was One Minute Silence, which were, uh, the UK's answer to Rage Against the Machine, and wow. Kitty. Kitty were opening, and I fucking love Kitty. So, yeah, yeah, I was well, well happy there. Um, and then a few months after that, I saw Fear Factory for the first time ever um, on Halloween, of all bloody dates. So there we go. It's a great time to see Fear Factory. <laughs> it, it really was, because when they'd done the cover of Cars, and their encore was to get Gary Newman out on stage with them and do Cars with them. And it's just like, yes, yes, all the yes. I, I, yes, I'm not leaving this building now. Keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I think, I think the most, um, I think the most amazing thing I've probably heard recently. Was it my show? Past year or so, <laughs> is baby metal. She has a weird taste sometimes. No, no, I'm going to defend her on this because I know they get a lot of detractors, but I also love baby metal because they're doing they something have- different. They are. I mean, that's also why I love Corn because they they're different, but they keep it real. You know, like they do songs that their producers are like, "Don't do it," and they're like, "Well, fuck you." I can't believe you just used the term "keep it real." <laughs> Sorry, for keep it real, but for metal. I do, I yeah, do it with the kids. You know, it's, it's because of like of. of Obviously, well, listen to more than just metal. I've actually been listening to some hip hop recently, and then so just hearing you come out and keep it real just threw me off for a moment. There. Who are you? <laughs> what are you done with running? <laughs> oh, Ronnie's here. Ronnie's just incredibly weird. <laughs> then again, I can't. I can't say anything. Like, I'm one of these people that loves her metal, but will also listen to K-pop. <laughs> I am pretty much metal or nothing. You enjoy some K-pop. Don't even lie, Joe. But my collection is nothing but metal. <laughs> He's yeah. one of them. He's one of them. <laughs> yeah. But he's young. Wait, he's, he's, you. he's, he's young. I was like that when I was young. I was like, oh, I must be metal all the time. And then I found myself enjoying other stuff and finally got round to admit it to myself that I don't have to listen to just metal all the time. So... <laughs> I mean, I do explore sub-genres, if that counts. <laughs> We all do. (laughs) We all do. We all do. But that's enough about our porn collections. (laughs) Yeah, no, I just thought I'd have to mention baby metal because I wanted to know everyone's opinion on baby metal because obviously there's a lot of mixed opinions upon um, them. I I personally think that. Go ahead, Nate. Or, I mean, um. Joe. I think they're average. I think they're average. I think the, the backing band is amazing. I actually love the music that they produce, but the, I can't get on that well with the vocals. Yeah, I can understand why. I can understand why, but yeah, it's just something about them that I love. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll say this because they're doing something different. It's like back during the new metal days, um, what are they called? Um, Mad Capsule Markets. Absolutely goddamn love them back in the day. Um, but a lot of people don't remember them, unfortunately. And they were a Japanese band. I believe most of that band is now actually the backing band for Baby Metal. So, yeah. They are uh, releasing, the backing band for Baby Metal was releasing an album, I think, later this year? Yeah, yeah, I'd, um, I'd read about that, but we'll see when that happens, if it's any good, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's got to be weird, because I don't think they've said anything about whether it's going to have vocals or not. No, they haven't said that yet. Nah, so we'll have to see what happens there. Um, right, I'm just going to try and get some uh, some of the old music news. Um, oh yes, there was this that came up. Some of you may have read about it. About the, uh, over the last couple of weeks, Rex Brown of Pantera, since we mentioned them earlier, um, had said in his new book that they were very close to doing a reunion 
obviously without dying bag for obvious reasons. But um, now Vinnie Paul, because Pantera got mentioned, has basically just had a go and said like, "Oh, there was never a reunion on this." Now, am I the only one who seems to think that Vinnie Paul these days has just become a really, really whiny bastard when you mention Pantera? <laughs> He's been like it for a while. Yeah. Not just recently. He's been like it for a while. Yeah, but you could understand it for a while because obviously what happened to Dimebag, which was his brother. Course, yeah. But at the same time, it just seems you bring up Pantera around him and he just, he holds out, you know? Yeah. I'm, well, I, I'm from really... what I understand, um, if you even get a chance to interview Vinny, they tell you straight up, don't ask him about Pantera. Like, at all. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Sad, I, read a, yeah, I read an interview in a, a Metal Hammer a few months ago with Vin, uh, Vinnie Paul, and they did mention, will there be a Pantera remake? And you can just tell with the way, like, reading what he said, he was not happy that it got asked at all. They probably he, got, uh, yeah. he got very, very defensive, saying it would never, I, I would never do it, I could, um, I never want to do that again. I'm now with, um, what's his new band? Hell yeah. Well, say new band, it's been uh, going for a while, and I've listened to them. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? Them. All right, I've, band. I've listened to them, and, I can't say I'm impressed by hell, yeah. It has to be said, I'm afraid. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not too keen on them. No. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, my take on it, well, for one, with the whole baby metal thing, I'm not a big fan, but I don't hate on them. And I got a buddy of mine who absolutely adores them. So, you know. And like you said, the backing band, though, the musicianship, especially with the backing band, is amazing. Can't You can't, deny that yeah as far as pantera is concerned in this in a reunion um i've got mixed feelings about this i mean number one it's never going to be pantera dime oh, is no. gone yeah you know if they were to do it number one dylan and 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 Vinny have shit they got to resolve firstly i don't think it's ever going to happen i think Vinny is very fucking a very 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 stubborn guy i think he blames Phil for what happened. It does come across that way with the um, what he oh, said. Oh, he does. Rex. I mean, if you read Rex's book, he's straight up right in front of Dimebag's charts, man. He asked Rex, see what you've done? And Rex was like, what the fuck, man? What did I do? Like, Jesus. in his mind, I think it, the way Vinny feels about it, if Pantera had never broke up, then they wouldn't have been playing in that club in the first place. That's, I think, the way Vinny looks at it. So, in other words, Dime wouldn't have been in that situation. Yeah, but um, wasn't the breakup... I mean, the full details of the breakup have never really been released, but it seemed to be kind of a unanimous decision between all of them. Like, it wasn't well, just think, Phil, and I don't defend Phil very often, but especially these like, days, but... Um, yeah. Well, part of, the, part of the problem was, is you have... You're always going to have conflicting stories, but I'm, the way Rex presented it is he felt like they just needed some time apart. Yeah. And yeah. I think Phil wanted to try other things, and whatever else you can say about the guy, I'm sorry, but his fucking side projects have pretty much smoked his former band members. But they don't yeah, even yeah. care. I mean, hell yeah, okay. Uh, Rex, this new thing he's got going, it's okay, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, only, that's a whole other... The only one that was um, decent and getting some traction probably was Damage Plan. It has to be said. That was... Oh, yeah, yeah. But we'll never know because, you yeah. know, of what happened. But uh, I, I I think the Damage Plan was one of those things where I don't really feel like they found their niche yet. No, and no. And unfortunately, they never got to because, you know, of what happened. Yeah. But I, I, I think that... um. For, so for, for even any kind of a reunion to happen, which, I mean, Phil has tried. He even fucking, I saw an interview a while back where he told, he sent him an e email saying, dude, if it takes you punching me in the fucking face over and over and over and over, I'll let you. As long as we can sit down and talk afterwards. Yeah. You know? But then he's not going to do that. It's just not going to happen. He is a bitter motherfucker. I'm not judging him for that. After all, he saw his little brother gunned down in front of him. Yeah. That's fucked up, man. I mean, the whole situation's fucked up. But with that being said, even if they were able to sit down and 
and I would like to see them just on, on, on a personal level set aside their differences, whether they got back together musically or not. Eh. As I said, part of me is like, I, I wouldn't mind them doing it. I know Zach's a good enough guitar player he could probably pull it off, but I wouldn't want him to call it Pantera. No, no. I would want him to call it something. Call it Cowboys from Hell or whatever the fuck. Don't call it Pantera. That's just the way I feel about it. But I don't think it's ever going to fucking happen. It's, uh, I mean, he even says right here, it's not going to fucking happen. Yeah, I'm just going to say I have no comment on any of that, man. I'm beyond Pantera. I've done so many other things with my life since then, and I always believed that if you live in the past, you have no future. So, man, I'm happy doing what I do with Hell Yeah, and I'm going to leave it at that. Jesus. Well, he's... Uh... It's, it's a shame, though, that he won't talk about Pantera anymore, though. It's something that he seems like he's never going to admit to himself anymore. It's a shame, because it was a huge part of his life for so long. So, right. It is, it is sad. It's sad that... But he, he said this, man, which surprises me that he even mentioned Philip by name, because Rex wrote that book in 2013. I've read it. It's a pretty good read. And, you know, when I when I read a book like that, I realize that I'm only getting one person's perspective of what happened and went down. Um, um, but, yeah, according to, to Blabbermouth, the book stated Paul was a strange person, that Paul was always about party, 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 and only got laid maybe one out of ten times. And this is what Benny says. All I can say is that, well, I'll refer to Philip's comments about Rex's book. A bunch of mythology, man. We don't know where he came up with all this. More power to him, man. I'm like, wow, he actually mentioned Phil's name without ripping on him. Oh, that, is some, first. <laughs> that, that is a little bit of progress there. So, who knows? Maybe. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll start. I can't, if it's going to happen, it won't be with Vinnie Paul. I think that's what people have got to admit to themselves. It's not going to happen with Vinnie Paul if it does happen at all, really. So, right. it's... Well, like I said, I wouldn't want them to call it Pantera anyway. If they want to do something to celebrate Dime or celebrate the Pantera music, fine. But call it something else. Well, they already man. do that with um, Dime Fest, don't they? Every year, I do believe. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Although, just... Phil did kind of ruin that the other year with his um, slightly... Well, I'll say slightly with his Nazi salute, but that's another talk for another time. So... Yeah. Well, you know, I love Phil, but sometimes I'm just like, dude, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. You know, I think he needs to... I think he needs to put the booze down and, and everything, yeah. you know? Yeah, because he seems to be slipping back into a few addictions again, which is never going to be good. So... Right. It, it worries me. I'm just like, oh, Jesus, Phil, please don't start raining heroin again. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, as now on to other things, um, I did. We spoke about this. Well, I spoke about this last week with uh, Benedict. But well, I've got you guys here. Um, now in America and Mexico, they do the uh, Knot Fest, which is the festival run by Slipknot. That happens every year. And um, now Slipknot usually you're about headline to where it. They combined it with Ozfest. Sorry. You're about to mention where they combined it this year with Ozfest. Uh, no, Slipknot are not playing it. <laughs> They're not playing. Wait, they're not playing their own festival. Nope, nope. They are not playing Not Fest. <laughs> so then it's not Not Fest. It's just not that is the question, <laughs> isn't it? Really, is it? Does it matter if they? Fest. Does it really matter if they play or not? Really, I mean, they say yeah. it up. It's the first one they're not playing, but yeah, they they have confirmed they will not be headlining or playing Not Fest this year. Huh. Interesting. It's got, know, that's, that's a little fucked up, man. It is, it is. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, how can you have not fest without slip noise? It's a bit of a cliche, I think. Yeah, yeah, admittedly. I mean, with Ozfest, I believe there's always been... Ozzy's either done it solo headlining, or it's been with Black Sabbath every Ozfest. Yeah. Um, which I think is coming back, isn't it? Or whether we get yeah, another one in... It's, it's, it's being a part of um, not fest this year. Yeah, if we're getting enough, ever go get it back in the UK again, Christ knows. But um, <laughs> considering it's not been here for 14 years, I very much doubt it. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, they've released some of the lineup for the Mexico edition of Not Fest, and I kind of want to go. <laughs> Who's playing? Uh, a perfect circle for the first time in Christ knows how long. Um, Corn are playing. Uh, with yeah. special 
special guests, Anthrax, Stone Sour, so some of Slipknot will be there, and Bullet okay, for My Valentine. going to be there in some way. Uh, yeah. Bullet for My Valentine. Also, Children of Bodom are playing. Uh, okay, I want to go. Cannibal Corpse of all people. That I was What's not me? expecting. And no. a band that not many people will probably know unless you search the darkest recesses of YouTube. Maximum the Hormone are playing. And if you've not... Sorry, what was that name? Maximum the Hormone. Ma Maximum the Hormone? Yeah. a pregnant woman? No, no. <laughs> um, if you've not checked out Maximum the Hormone, check them out. They are... How can I put it? Um, I've heard one song. They're very good, they're very heavy, and they're Japanese and mental, I think is the best way I can put it. Ooh, really? good already. Yeah, yeah they I'm are... Um, interesting. It's interesting that they're playing Knotfest, because I don't know... I don't know where they would have found them, so I'm guessing they haven't really got anywhere in America, because I definitely haven't over here in the UK. Uh, Mike would know that more. Have you heard of uh, Maximum the Hormone, Mike? No. <laughs> so it's just like... Yeah, it's... Um, Sorry, it's risen from the depths. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I stumbled across them um, on YouTube about three o'clock in the morning at one point. I was just like, this is awesome, but I'm so tired, I'm not sure if this is making sense. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you listened to it when you're not tired? I have. I did actually listen to it the next day. And it's still good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't <laughs> worry. I'm not putting you on a... Uh, on a bad path here. <laughs> okay, thank God for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you like your music, Japanese and mental, definitely check them out. Um, also, other things that have been announced, uh, Devil Driver Tour, they've got to have, um, they'll be supported by 36 Crazy Fists and Uncured. Now, I'll admit, I didn't even know 36 Crazy Fists were still going. I need to die. I, I, yeah, I'm surprised they are still going. Um, and they're also going to have Tetrarch and Kane Hill as well. Kane Hill being the kind of revi new metal revivalist band. They released a new album, uh, their debut album last year. And not bad, not bad. Even if one of the songs does sound like a rip-off of uh, Mob Scene by Marilyn Manson, quite blatantly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. You listen yeah, by after this. I, yeah, I thought that as well. When um... New Jesus, I think, was the song. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. They have a, a lot of Jesus symbolism in their uh, promo shoots. Yeah, yeah. It's like, literally, that song is just Mob Scene by Marilyn Manson. But, saying that, Mob Scene was basically Be Aggressive by Faith No More, so it's a lo lo wonderful line of people ripping each other off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Now, Mike, uh, you've got a show tonight, haven't you, mate? Yes, I do. Uh, what have you got lined up for your show tonight for the lovely people? Well, um, I open everything like I always do with the almighty Black Sabbath. And I'm going to play some of that band I told you about earlier, Bastard. You know me, man. I mix it up. There'll be some thra old classic thrash, new wave of thrash, fucking a lot of traditional metal, some sludge metal, um... You know, even some black and death metal. I, I, I mix it up on my show. I always have. Yeah, your show is um very much like mine, where you play a little bit of everything that you can, really. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, man, because I, well, I love it all, really. And I don't mean, like, all metal, but, like, there's always a band in, in a certain, you know, subgenre that I love. And so I can find, I mean... Believe me, I can find plenty of music to fill up a six-hour show. I, I I never really have a problem doing that. So. No, and, no. And it's weird. Like, on my show, you you, you might hear the depth tones and then turn right around, and you'll hear a fucking um, abhorrent conformity. You just don't know <laughs> what you're going to get. You know, that's, and I that's used to always power metal, too. So, you know, like I'm always see. asking Kane, hey, dude, man, help me pick up some good power metal tunes. Okay, <laughs> you know. I bet he jumps at the chance, doesn't he? Always, always, always. <laughs> now, um, I've got to ask this before I say about this. What did people think of the last Slayer album? I liked it. I mean, c considering that uh, Jeff Hanneman wasn't there, and, you know, of course, you know, Lombardo wasn't there, but, you know, they've done some, I feel, decent records without Lombardo before. 
Paul yeah. Bostaff's an amazing drummer. I mean, he, you know, he's been with Exodus, he's been with Testament. You know, he's he's a damn good drummer. Um, I liked it. Now, am I saying it's the greatest Slayer album? Well, of course not. But I was impressed because, quite honestly, I was like, man, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull this off. And I think with the with the next record, if they can get Gary Holt from Exodus. You know, because he's still doing double duty, from what I understand. Yeah. Um, he's working on Exodus, but if they, if they can get him involved in the songwriting process, I think they'll be just fine. Gary's an amazing guitar player. Yeah, definitely. And how about you, Natalie and Joe? Uh, I've not listened to the whole album. Well, that's not a good start, really. <laughs> was, yeah, um, I thought it was average. At best, what I listened to. Um, yeah, I've I've got to but, agree with you on that. I've listened to the whole album. I thought it was it was an average Slayer album, which is still a very good album in general terms. But yeah, yeah, it was a when, bit. When I was listening to it, it was re- when I was getting ready for work in the morning, so I didn't finish listening to the album. And then on the way, as I got back home from work, I just put something else on. Yeah, so I hadn't, I hadn't built up enough hype. <laughs> Yeah. And here's the thing, man, and, and I don't mean any disrespect to Slayer when I say this, but does anybody truly believe they're ever going to come out with an album that's going to match a Seasons or South of Heaven, Rain and Blood, or even the first two? It, it's not going to fucking happen, man. I, I'm i sorry, it's just not. No, no, I, obviously, but I mean, it would just be nice to have a, another really, really good Slayer album again, you know? It doesn't have to be a classic, but... Like, I mean, no, no. I mean, like I said, don't get me wrong. I don't think Repentless was like a... Like I said, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, so maybe maybe that's why I'm giving it uh, some slack is because I had lowered expectations. Yeah. Um, but even so, I mean, to me, fuck, I mean, is there really ever truly a bad Slayer record? Now, I know some people want to throw Diablo some music out there, but I don't understand why that album gets the hate that it does. I think it's because of the down tuning. I think it was because of the down tuning. That's what people well, took an issue well, with. You know, who the fuck wasn't down tuning then? And exactly. again, what's wrong with the band experiment? You know, if, if you know, I mean, all the Metallica fans, who is experiment? Okay, so but if Slayer tries it, they get crucified. Fuck off, man. Of course, I know some people would say Metallica get crucified for it, too. And I guess they do to a certain extent. But, boy, the record sales sure don't fucking reflect that, does it? No, no, they don't seem to uh, lose that many sales for it. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, you know. I mean, it kind of amazes me. It's like people will buy it just because it's got the Metallica label slapped on it, man. Yeah, yeah. Fat, I don't uh, like that about any band. I don't give a fuck. A <laughs> turd is a turd, okay? See, um, for me, the last really, really good Slayer album, um, I'm, I'm probably in the minority here, but I absolutely love Christ Illusion. From beginning to end, that album just knocked it out of the park. It's a solid record, dude. It's a solid really record. Cool. That's what I'm saying. Slayer, to my opinion, has never really put out a bad record. I mean, I'm talking a, a, an all-out piece of shit album. I don't think they've done it. That's um, just my opinion. What no, the say? closest they've come would have been... Like to, uh, I'll say shit album, but it's just the way they've done the covers, really, and that was the covers album of uh, punk songs. That. Oh, Undisputed Attitude? Yeah, yeah, that weren't great. I gave that one a miss. I've, I remember hearing it was just going to be covers. I'm not a huge fan of cover albums in general, so I just sort of passed over it. Like when I'm on a math done their um, cover EP, I just skipped over it. Oh, see, I got that free with uh, the album. That cover EP. <laughs> Fair enough. I didn't even know it had been released separately, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, um, I've, yeah, I've never separate. listened to it. I've never listened to it, either. That's a, even worse. So. <laughs> anyway, Mike, so, yeah, you got to say. But, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, Undisputed Attitude, it is what it is. I'm, I'm with uh, Joe. It's, it's, you know, it was what it was. I mean, I did like Gemini, but that was an original song, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, um, but yeah, I mean, I can't really bag on Slayer. You know, it's, it's kind of funny because when I was younger and I was all into the thrash metal movement, as much as I loved Metallica, I was a Megadeth guy. Yeah. And, uh, 
what's funny about the Big Four, though, is over the years it got to the point where I became more of a Slayer dude only because, in my opinion, they were the one band out of the Big Four that never really faltered or disappointed me, really. Where I was like, oh, well, that album's a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> with Slayer, and, and there's other thrash man, bands I feel that way about. Overkill, um, Testament. There's bands out there where I'm like, I don't think they put out a bad record. There's the albums I like better than others, but there's never been an album where I was like, oh, well, God, that sucks. Yeah. You know, so. Well, the reason I brought this up is because, um, according to Kerry King, uh, Sly have already got another six, have got six new songs written. Uh, believably, I believe it's with Gary Holt, so he's definitely continuing with Slayer, um, with a possible release in 2018. Um, now it's interesting because I remember back when they released Repentless, um, interviews with Tom, and Tom was really unsure whether he wanted to really continue with Slayer after uh, Repentless, let alone release any more new albums. So, what are people thinking on that? Hmm. Well, it's nice that he wanted to stay, but if he was, it doesn't also sound like his heart was in it. And yeah, if that's not in it. Is he, is that's what's going to worry I mean, me. You know, they go get in the studio, and then he's going to be like, "Do I really want to continue this anymore?" You know? Yeah. Well, and I think people have to realize out of anybody in the band, Tom was probably the closest to Jeff. Yeah. And I think he was like, yeah. man, you know, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know how much more Slayer, Gas Slayer's got in him. I will say this, though. Um, I can't think of anybody better to replace Jeff. No. Or no. to succeed Jeff, I should say, than, than, than Gary. And here's the thing that's interesting. From what I've read or understand, I could be wrong about this, but Jeff and him had made a promise to each other that if anything happened to one or the other, they would, re like, in other words, if Gary Holt had passed on instead of Jeff, yeah. Jeff Hanneman would also be in Exodus now. Ah. And I'm like, wow, yeah, I think that's really fucking cool. Man. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it's it's interesting, very interesting. I mean, we're in that weird time now where all the classic bands and even the fresh bands are getting to the point where it's like, these guys can't continue on for much longer, surely. I mean, this might well be the last Slayer album we ever get. Um, I'd imagine we've possibly only got one or two more Megadeth albums, one or two more Metallica albums, and Anthrax possibly three more albums, depending how they're going. Um, and then they've all got to start sort of breaking up. I mean, we lost. Well, I say lost. We've, we now have no Black Sabbath officially um, after last year. So um, it's going to be interesting to see who steps up and takes over. It's been a debate the, for a long time. Who would be the next big headliners once we haven't, everyone else... Yeah, won. we haven't got Sabbath, have we, really? We haven't got anyone who can take that void. That's the hard part. No. Yeah. Natalie's very quiet, um, by the way. <laughs> she's, she's popped out. <laughs> oh, fair <Okay>. enough. <laughs> yeah, she... Yeah. Um, that's, that's why she's quiet, because she's not in the room. Fair enough. <laughs> Well, I think that, um, unless you want to go first, Joe, do you want to go first? What's that one? Sorry. You want to go ahead? Do you want to comment on this first, or can I go ahead? Yeah, no, you go ahead. All right, brother. Um, no, I think that, um, I think bands, and I think there are certain bands, like Iron Maiden. Yeah. They're, God, man, you want to talk about a band that has a loyal fucking following. Like, Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong, I'm a Maiden fan. I think the first six albums were just masterpieces yeah. um, of, of metal, you know. I mean, and I think out of any of the new wave of, of, of British heavy metal bands, they were by far a cut and above all the rest. Um, but with that being said, I think it's going to be them guys. It's going to be guys like that. It's going to be Jewish priests that are going to fill that void, you know. Um, and then when they're gone... It'll go from there. I mean, who knows? One of these days, it could be bands like Lamb of God that are the big headliner bands, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, Lamb of God would be the ones that I could see probably most likely to replace the uh, the gap in of Slayer when Slayer came to an end, I'd probably say. It's going to be I bands like that. I Ghost being a big headliner. Ghost, yeah. Ghost could be, rise up to being the new, like, 
in a way, Black Sabbath. Um, yeah. If they can sort out their lineup. <laughs> yeah, they have hey, got man. that issue. I saw, I've seen those three times now. Yeah. And they're a good fucking band, man. I mean, they're tight. They're good. I like them. I know they're another band that's kind of divisive among metal fans, but I really dig them, man. I, I love the theatricality. Um, I love the hooks to the song. The one thing I will say about them, though, they're a much heavier band live yeah. than they are on their records. I yeah. would love for them to get a producer. Like They need to do like, like Kiss did in 75 with a live. Yeah. People got to remember something. Alive saved Kiss's ass. If that album hadn't been recorded, they they were fucking gone, dude. They were done. And no, pre- I mean, I love the first three Kiss albums. Don't get me wrong. But when you listen to the songs, they're good songs, great songs, really. But when you listen to the the production of them compared to the production of Alive. You know, it's like, it kind of cracks me up when some people want to say Bob Ezrin's the greatest Kiss producer. You know what? I got one word for Bob Ezrin. Eddie fucking Crane. All right? I mean, I'm sorry, but he was the producer who, in my opinion, truly captured Kiss's sound. Because there was a lot, um, Paul Stanley even talked about it, like a lot of fans would go, well, none of your albums really sound the way you do live. They do a live, man, and it blows up. I think Ghost should do a live album, and they need to find their Eddie Kramer to do it. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's. I'll say it's interesting times. I mean, there's a lot of bands that I've heard that could do with being better produced because there's albums that are out there. You listen to them, you're like, that's a really good album, but the production's not quite right, and it kind of puts you off the albums a little bit. I've heard that with a few um, recent releases. There's um, an unsigned band actually called The Scenery that I've done a, a review of their album at because um, they they actually contacted me out of the blue. Um, they're a really good band. Think of like, think of melodic death metal, but instead of growled vocals all the way through, more kind of uh, metal stroke power metal vocals over the top of those riffs. Is they an interesting <laughs> band, man? Really good. Um, but they they needed like if I know obviously they're unsigned, so I can't couldn't afford it. But if the label gets behind them, that band are going to be huge. They've got the songs there, they got the riffs there, but um, yeah, the production was a bit sort of middling. So if they can get signed and get a really good studio and that behind them, that is an awesome yeah. band for the future. So yeah, yeah the go. scenery guys, go check them out. Awesome band. Well, yeah. I don't know. I, I just kind of crack up because you always hear about how the, the demise of metal, and I'm like, really? Because even before I joined the station, and now especially since I am on an online radio station, man, there's fucking a billion metal bands coming out of the metal. I can't keep track. No can I, man. I mean, I can't keep fucking track, man. And, and I mean, and, and, and not only that, but all the different subgenres and shit, I'm like, holy fuck, like, damn, you know? Like, so for, for me, I just, um, yeah, I kind of chuckle when I hear shit like that, you know? I'm saying, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, it's dead, whatever. Um, yeah, but like I said, with that being said, it, it, I mean, there is a cause for concern because, you know, as great as Lamb of God is, are they going to be able to pack a place like Metallica? I don't know, man. I mean, it yeah. amazes me how Metallica can still, you know, uh, sell out fucking baseball stadiums, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, that's a feat. I mean, not every band can do that, you know. Um, Joe, you got to say something then, mate. What were you going to say? Oh, God, I can't actually remember. Uh, <laughs> my brain... I had a bit of a brain fart. I uh, just want to check. Sorry, you say no, that, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, that's cool. Man. Uh, just want to check. Oh, yeah, so you, you said uh, Natalie had gone out. Is she all right, man? Yeah, she's back now. All right. Welcome back, Natalie. Yes, <laughs> just back in. <laughs> uh, Bye. <laughs> she had to switch, so I think she got lost playing Mario Kart. Ah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Right, up next, um, we've got on the Metal Injection website, um, M. Shallows of Event Sevenfold, who we've all come to a kind of conclusion that we're all kind of, eh, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's a general sort of blanket statement on our feelings towards them. He's revealed it is um, top ten of his favourite metal albums ever. And up first, he's got At The Gate, Slaughter of the Soul. Fully agree with this. Absolutely awesome album. What are you guys thinking on that? 
that's really yeah, it's a really good album. Um, oh, I was great expecting album. it though. Oh, here's. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, what was that? Um, <laughs> really, yeah, well, great album. But I wasn't expecting that for. Um, you, you said it was M Shadows, didn't you? Yeah, M Shadows of um, M Shadows. Sorry, of yeah. Event Sevenfold. Yeah. I'm oh, there's a few. To be, uh, on his list. Yeah, there's a few surprising ones on it, to be honest with you. I will... Because there's another list I've got to get to later as well. Because um, there was a few on that that I was like, really? So, um, yeah. Um, how's Natalie feeling on that? Now that she's back and not wandered off with Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'd like nothing to add. Um, and sadly, I've not heard that album either, so I'm very, very useless with the input right now. Joe, but, Joe, uh, do your job, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm introducing her band, I mean, band when, by band at a time. I mean, when we were talking about news of people in bands, I was actually going to mention how um, Five Finger Death Punch are meant to be doing, like, a tour, aren't they? They and, are, yeah. Um, jo- and Joe and I were thinking about going, but as soon as we found out Ivan Moody is now out of it for his own reasons, I was just like, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> He's out of it, but in it, out of it, but in it. Yeah, they kept, they kept changing it, and I was just like, for fuck's sake, make up your minds. I want yeah. to get a ticket and see them, the, but if it's not Ivan Moody's voice, I'm going to be a bit disappointed, you know? The guy who's actually covering him, um, he was in a band with a guitarist the Fear Factory that was called Divine Heresy, and since he was in that band, he has now been chucked out of five different bands, because while he was wow. in Divine Heresy, he basically, he'd done the first few tours absolutely fine, then, his name's Tommy's Vex, Tommy Vex, that's it. Then he yeah. um, started getting really, really lazy. He actually started refusing to go on stage to do the I'm gig. I'm hearing about that. Yeah, and now Five Finger Death Punch have cho- chosen him, of all people, to uh, continue the shows. And it's like, you guys just want drama, don't you? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, because, like, literally, like, I've always, always wanted to see Five Finger Death Punch because I also love Ivan Moody's voice. Like, he makes it so good. But now, because obviously he's not in the band, I'm just like, my one chance I could have seen Five Finger Death Punch. Like, I had the cash and everything, and now I'm not going to go see them. Well, he is, he, is, he is still in the band. He's just in um, rehab at the moment. So, yeah. uh, he will be coming back, so just save your money for next tour. I'm not a fan, I've got to be honest. I've heard their latest album, weren't that impressed, and I've heard a few other bits, and they, personally, they've done nothing for me. But, um, I'm sure they will be back. Um, in fact, he might be back for this tour, I don't know. You never know, I will let you know if I hear anything on that, because there is a bit of news on that coming up later. So, yes, we will get to that. We will get to that. Okay. Uh, but okay. yes, Joe needs to get you to listen to At The Gate, Slaughter the Shot. Slaughter of the Soul, if I could say it properly. Um, he, needs, he, needs to, he needs to educate me on a lot of things. I'm, waiting, I'm still quite new into this, if you'd say. I'm waiting oh, to transfer what? my CD collection over and I'm just going to just play every CD. That's that's a good idea. And obviously, listen to uh, myself and Mike's shows on thatmetalstation.com. Plug, plug. <laughs> you know, we'll introduce you to some new bands, won't we, Mike? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> so, um, but no, uh, At the Gate, Slaughter, and Soul, fantastic album. Game indeed. changing, in indeed. my opinion. It's, it was, it, it's one of those seminal metal albums. So it, good kind of, it, it helped really solidify the uh, melodic death metal sound, if I remember right. Oh, the whole right. Gothenburg scene. That's it, yeah. Gothenburg. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's number one on uh, M Shadows, like, top ten albums of all time. Number two is the only Dream Theater album I actually like, which is Metropolis Part 2, Scenes from a Memory. Another bit of a shocker there, in a way, for M Shadows. Yeah, true. Um, well, it might explain um, why it made I'm seven fold that songs. Album, so <laughs> even for Dream Theater, so if I'm honest. That, even... Uh, that al- not even that album really done anything for me if I'm honest for Dream Theater oh, um, see, that's the, that is literally the only one because I've got pretty much all of them except up to a point when I realised after listening I was like do you know what I'm not enjoying these <laughs> <laughs> but I've listened to most of them and like that was the one that I remember listening to again and again because I actually really enjoyed it and then I listened to the others and I'm like oh 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 and I like my prog metal so Dream Theater, I don't know. I think it's like the Event Sevenfold song. Sometimes 
they get a good riff and then they just keep going and going yeah. and going. I know that's the essential of Prog, but good God, Dream Theater, just stop. Stop the song. Stop the song. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike, how are you on Dream Theater, man? Uh, <laughs> I've always been an ah eh on them. Yeah. I like progressive metal, but I mean they're they're incredibly talented. Oh definitely. Can't cannot deny I guess that. Dream Theater, the only way I could describe it I kinda dig them and I kinda don't, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. For basically the same reasons you said, man. It's like they'll have a killer riff, but good God, man. And that's a complaint I got about the Almighty Iron Maiden. Yeah, this, yeah. I mean, I love them, but... They have a few songs the that just... The last few albums, they've just gotten into this kick where it's like, we want to do 15-minute, 20-minute songs, and I don't know, man. To me, don't get me wrong, I love epic tracks. Yeah. I absolutely love them. But to me, I remember the, the good old days. I know it's going to make me sound like one of them old fucking curmudgeons, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> where... You know, the epic track usually was the closing track, and or, or you know, and it was... It was a special thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now it's like every goddamn song is an epic track. And, and, and there's been a few bands that can do shit like that and pull it off. I think Machine, did, Machine Head did with the blackening. Yeah. But the thing is, when they, when they put out Under the Locust, they didn't fucking try to repeat the blackening. You know what I mean? They, they, my problem with Maiden is it's fine if they did one album like that, but the last several albums have been that way. To where I'm like, since since they uh, uh, reformed with uh, Bruce Dickinson, basically. Yeah, but I did. The first time I really noticed it was probably around Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. I say that's my favorite album. I've got to be honest. I like that record. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but that was when I noticed it. You know where they were getting more prog. Yeah. Um. But then again, they did an album like Fear of the Dark, which wasn't as, as, you know, but I don't know, like, I just think the last several albums, like, Book of Souls, dude, it's got some good songs on it, but it's... Book of Souls doesn't need to be two discs long. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's, god damn, it's too long, man, it's too much, it's like, holy shit, like, um, I don't know, I just kind of feel like, um, it's a... It's an overextension of their sound, in a way. If you get what I mean by that, well, if that I makes just, sense. I don't know, man. I don't mind them doing long songs from time to time. I, I don't want to stifle their creativity or anything, you know, but... Maybe I should play it in a little bit would themselves. Would it be too much to ask to do a kick-ass four-minute, five-minute song like The Trooper? Is yeah. that too much to fucking ask? Yeah, I mean, I this guess is... it is. It's, it's like the, the... I think the problem with Dream Fear, uh, um, going back to that... It's like the, as you said, with the later day Iron Maiden songs. Um, there's really good songs in there, but they're hidden behind 10, 15 minutes of fluff added to it as well, which is what puts me off Dream Theater most of the time. And some of the newer Iron Maiden, it's like that was awesome. Those first four minutes. Why is this song still going? Why is it still going? Stop. So, <laughs> um, right. now one for you, uh, power metal fans. Um, Halloween, Keeper of the Keys, part, Keeper of the Seven Keys, sorry, part two, is at number three on M Shadows list. One album. of my old favourite albums. Ah. Great album. Ah, I see. Of... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can't deny they are, these days, an incredibly cheesy power metal band. You can't deny oh, that. Oh. <laughs> but, but power metal in itself is a cheesy genre. Yeah, yeah, it kind yeah. of goes... It kind of goes between three things with power metal for me. You get the really epic power metal like um, Camelot, um, yep. the cheesy sounding stuff like Halloween, or Disney soundtracks, Stratovarius. <laughs> true. Yeah, very true. <laughs> that's, that's the only one I could describe some Stratovarius stuff. I'll admit they're very Disney like. Yeah, I, 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 I do like the old Stratovarius track, but sometimes you listen to it like. Why do I feel like I should be watching animation on the TV screen while well, this song is going on? <laughs> well, they, they do always say a Stratovarius mosh pit will be uh, a bunch of dolphins just jumping out the ocean. I think that's going to be their next album cover. 
I'm surprised it hasn't been an album cover. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> anyway, Mike, so, yeah, you started speaking there, man. Um, sorry about that. I'm in the middle of eating, too, guys. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. No, um, <laughs> no, um, what I was going to say, though, is there's definitely a lot of cheese in power metal. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why my nephew... Man, I've been plugging the shit out of that kid. This <laughs> you might as well <laughs> tell everyone when his show is, man. You might as well. It's what it's here for as well. Yeah, <laughs> it, well, it, it's Sundays right now from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But the time is going to be changing pretty soon. Yeah? He's going to be going for... Yeah. Um, he's going to be going um, from, I believe, uh, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But the good side of that is I'll be able to do his shows with him from time to time. Oh, so is um, he going to be after me and Chewy then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. excellent. Um, excellent. Because, uh, well, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but we're getting a bunch of new DJs. But yeah, I won't. Have to change the time. You're safe, Psycho Sin. I want you to know. No, no, I wasn't sure if... Um if I was allowed to mention that or not, so I'm glad you brought that up. I'm not going to mention well, who the DJs are right gonna, now. I'm not going to say anything more than that, but we got a lot of changes coming up, some pretty exciting ones, uh, so just stay tuned. Indeed, indeed. Um, right, let's get back. Yeah, when it comes to power metal, it, I mean, I mean, it's one of the reasons why DJ Kane likes it so much is the cheesiness of it. The, the best way I, I can mean, describe power metal is there's no other metal that can make you just feel like pure glory. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> especially Camelot. Camelot, especially the last album. It's just Camelot filled with glory. You know, it's... Ah. Oh. Love and Camelot. Camelot, awesome. Um, saw them live on that tour for the last album and got to interview the keyboardist. And really nice guy, but at the same time I was trying not to stab him because he is married to the singer of Epica. Who is fucking gorgeous? <laughs> so, ah, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, Mike. Didn't mean to speak over you there, man. Oh, you're all right, brother. Um, no, um, I, I don't know. You know, like I said, yeah, power metal to me though, it, it is incredibly cheesy. Not all <laughs> of it, but, uh, but again, it's kind of part of its charm. I was going to say, I mean, is that che cheese is to power metal what? Christianity is with G to Jesus Christ. You can't have it yeah. without, you know, one without the other. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, look at Man of War, for Christ's sake. <laughs> we mean, have to. <laughs> well, no, but, you know, but again, you, you know, you want to talk about a band that's very influential. Oh, definitely. I mean, one of the fathers of power metal, really. I definitely. Mean, um, and they hated to ever play the I UK, say, which is a shame. I would, <laughs> I would say one of the bands that's the grandfather of power metal would be rainbow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I keep taking a swig of drink at the wrong time, don't I? <laughs> Up next, um, funny enough, I think we can all agree on this one, I am made a number of the beast. Fair enough. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, should be an everyone's classic. Um, do you know what? You know what? It's, I'm kind of with you there, Joe, but at the same time, for me, if I, was, if I was to do a top ten list and I only allowed one album by every band I was to pick, um, for me it would be Seventh Son in my top ten. Number of the Beast would be in, like, the top twenty. Fair enough. Wow. So. No. Peace of mind for me, my brother. I uh, see. See, Number of the Beast is, it's an awesome album, do not get me wrong, but it's also the, um, I suppose you'd call it the commercial album. Cause it's got all the, most of the hits on it, as it were. So, it's slightly, it's slightly a bit of um, fatigue of hearing played some out. of the songs again and again for me. A little played out. I would yeah. That. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I need to hear "Run to the Hills" ever again right now. Um, Number the Beast itself is getting that way for me as well. Um, I've heard it a bit too many times. So, yeah. Um, up next is one I know Natalie will be very happy about. Uh, corn by corn. 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 Yeah, <laughs> first album corn. is uh, number five on uh, M Shadow's top ten albums of all time. Uh -huh. uh, that's I don't know if I say that's surprising or not, considering early events sevenfold. 
did have a bit of new metal to it and a lot of metalcore. <laughs> and a lot of metalcore. A lot of metalcore. Because I remember when they come out and um, unfortunately when I first looked at them they just looked like they were emo to me. Because I had the, like, the black well, eyeliner and everything. I was like, oh, oh. And if there's, there's one movement I could never stand and that is emo. I could not get into that at all. So that no. put me off. But, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm feeling Natalie's about to tell me she was into emo bands, aren't you? Um, well, let's just say, back when me and Joe first went out at the age of 14, we were both emo faggots. So... <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so there yeah. we go. <laughs> no, we've, uh, you we've, went and we've watched... grown and matured in the music world. <laughs> but did you go and see Fuel for a Friend at their farewell tour when they played Chinneries? Yeah, I did. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw it... them play at Chinneries. You uh, sad kid. <laughs> I'll give it. I'll, I'll give it a Fuel for a Friend. They done one good song, and that was June. Yeah. June or whatever it's called. Yeah. I think it was one of their first singles as well. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> so, apart from that, yeah, emo didn't do much for me. Um, I liked post-hardcore, like um, Blast Jaw and um, 100 Reasons. Loved both those bands. But, yeah, emo, it was just like, oh, they're whining about their girlfriend again. Great. Great. <laughs> Go away. Pretty much. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Corn Corn, number five on M. Shadow's top ten list. One of the albums that got me into new metal, that is. Absolutely loved it. Um, because, again, it's just... It was different. It was different. As Mike said earlier, with um, his experience with Gorn, it was just something new, something fresh. Um, I liked Limp Biscuit back in the day. Um, and I will still, to this very day, defend the first Limp Biscuit album. Before Fred found money. <laughs> that first... Well, Limp- so, what was their first one? Uh, Three Dollar Bill. Uh, that's a good album. That's a good album. I listen to um, Chocolate Starfish and Hot Dog Flavored Water. That's, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just, let's just finish that sentence on that one. See, this is why you should have come to see Limp Biscuit when I saw them, because they were doing a mixture of, like, their old stuff, their new stuff, and they chose that, that their most popular hits, I think it was, because everyone was really getting into it. Mm. Limp Biscuit aren't are what I would call party metal. You can stick them on in the background at a party, people will love it because they've bombed out their mind. Listen to them now, especially their later stuff, at home by yourself on a stereo, you cringe. You cringe a lot, it has yeah. to be said. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, oh, don't get me wrong, $3 Bill Yule has some cringy lyrics on it. Like, all I wanted was a Pepsi, just one Pepsi, far from suicidal. Great lyric right there, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> there you yeah. go. Oh, dear. But Corn, yeah, Corn were the ones. Um, and then we get into a bit of thrash next on these uh, on this list. Megadeth, Countdown to Extinction. The last Megadeth album Mike really liked up until Dystopia. <laughs> Love, yeah. I mean, I like, I like Countdown. I think it's a good tune. Though. I liked it. I wouldn't say I loved it. Yeah, this, this album fucking rules. It ain't my fa- it's not my favourite Megadeth album. No, no. no. Uh, for me, that's, yeah, that's Rust in Peace myself. Although, I do like Euthanasia quite a lot, for itself. Well, which one was it that he um, has on his list? Uh, Countdown to Extinction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, I think... See, I, that, yeah. For me, it's Peace Cells, man. That album changed my fucking life. Yeah. Also, it's got "Wake uh, Wake Up Dead," which is one of my favourite Megadeth songs. So, <laughs> well, and that, that's a that's a track that um, I didn't know it then, but described my life with my most recent ex. That that sounds terrifying. <laughs> it was. It was. But I, I I would relate. You know, like when he says, "I sneak in my own house at four in the morning yeah. and then out with the boys." I had nights like that where I would, you know, and I didn't go out all the time, but, I, I mean, with this gal, it was like I wasn't really allowed to have any kind of life at all. It was okay for her to go out with her girlfriends and be out all night and get fucking shit in the face, but if I did it, if I did anything, it was a fucking crime, you know, and 
Well, we I'm did. telling you, dude, I, I knew then if I woke her, I would wake up dead. Because, I mean, she was... We, we did uh, try and warn you, Mike. We did try and warn you not to date DJ Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, the guy's been ripping on me all day. You know? <laughs> well, that guy's always giving you shit, man. It's because I was well, on the old station. Say, I mean, you know, giving somebody a hard time to form a flirt, Ronnie. You better look out. Oh, yeah, he's already said something about sending me pink panties in the post, so, and sending him uh, pictures, so I'm slightly concerned. <laughs> How do you, uh, I <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the pictures first, Mike. Anyway. Uh, I'd really rather you didn't. <laughs> You're not, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Natalie and Joe, what are your thoughts on that Megadeth album? Um, I'm with... I'm with Mike. I really enjoy the album, but I, I wouldn't say it's my favourite Megadeth. What? Uh, mine would be Peace Cells as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm the odd one out Fucking again. Right, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, but no, it's it's still it's still a great album. But yeah, not one of their best. No, well, I will agree with that. It's not one of their best, but it does have uh, it does have some really good stuff on it. Like um, Foreclosure of a Dream, I believe, is on there, isn't it? If I'm right, yeah, Countdown Extinction. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the first Megadeth album I ever heard, as well. Uh, Countdown to Extinction. Yeah, yeah. If it's the one with, um, not Cybertron, uh, oh, Psycho Psychotron. something. Sorry? Psychotron? Yeah, yeah. If it's that album that has that song on it, then, yeah, that was the first Megadeth album I ever heard. Because I had the bleeding chorus. The yeah, I had that chorus stuck in my head for months. So... <laughs> How about you, Natalie? You, uh, I'm guessing you've been indoctrinated to like Megadeth by Joe. <laughs> Funnily enough, I did actually listen to a bit of Megadeth before I even knew Joe. So, <laughs> yeah. Personally, I think I, I, I think I have to agree with Mike and Joe on their opinions of the album, really, because they've said it all. For my opinion. Well, like, there we go. And your favourite Megadeth album? Oh. Oh God. Ignore the death stare you're getting from Joe right now. <laughs> oh God, Darren, it's literally piercing my soul. It's peace cells, isn't it, Nat? <laughs> <laughs> no, come to the dark side. It's rust in peace. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. In all fairness, because sadly, I'm one of these. I think Joe might quote it as one of these irritating people that don't pay attention to the album names. They just remember songs they enjoy from whatever album it may be. I'm one of those annoying people. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. I can understand why Joe gets annoyed. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she prefers the shuffle instead of just sticking on an album and just listening to it. But oh, lately, God. I've been a bit more album orientated. So I'm learning. I am learning. Yeah, because I'm there are a few bands where if you only listen to a few songs from an album out of order, it won't be as good as listening to the whole album, it has to be said. Yeah. Uh, Enslaved. Yeah. Enslaved is one of those bands. You won't get the same experience. Um, up next, uh, number seven. Oh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm irritating. I'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> um, in at number seven, because every bloody... I'm all for work. In at number seven. Just dick. <laughs> I stopped talking at the wrong time then. <laughs> anyway, in at number seven on his list is a band that everyone loves except for me, Metallica and Plaster of Muppets. I mean, Master of Puppets. <laughs> I'll let you guys yeah. talk this one out. You know, I'm not staying out of this. <laughs> Although I will give it to them. That is, that is an album that has the only Metallica song I can stand, which is Disposable Heroes. I actually don't mind that one. Revelation. <laughs> Revelation. Ronnie admitted to almost liking the Metallica song. So. <laughs> Why are you? What have you done with Ronnie? <laughs> he's in a he's in a like bag round the back. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes sense. But yeah, Master of Puppets. You guys, what's your favourite Metallica albums while we're here? Actually, that that would be mine. I think Master yeah. Puppets is a fucking absolute masterpiece. I think the first three albums, Cliff Burton era Metallica, I mean, that's all I got to say about it. Um, well, you need to that, say about it. That was right, the album with, um, I think, 
Was that the album with Orion on it as well, where he really showed his um, bass playing? Is that Master of Puppets? With what? Is it Master of Puppets has Orion on it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember that, and yeah, the bass player on that, I was just leaning to it again. Yep, I'm never going to be able to play bass that well. <laughs> I, I, I aspire to play bass that well. You might need a bass first, man. I had one. <laughs> I did have one. Uh, until crazy I'm just, yeah, until a Crazy X sold it. Yeah, we've all been there. Funny enough, mine is from Crazy X giving me mine. So, work that one out. <laughs> oh, you lucked out. I did. I really, really bloody did. It's a it's a crap thing. It's a crap <laughs> bass, but it'll do. So <laughs> it's, it's still a bass at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, up next on his list, he's got Pantera, Far Beyond Driven. Now. I'm going to be in the minority here, and I'm going to say this. I can't get on with that album. What? Fair enough. And it's just going I to pour love it. that bridge, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> There's a few songs on it. Um, like, um, I like the uh, two two bottles of pills, or whatever it's called. The really, really screwed up one that's on there. Um, where it's friends and a bottle of pills. Yeah, I love that for some reason. There's a couple of uh, cut other tunes on there. But as a whole album, I just didn't think it held together as well as their others. So, I know I'm in the minority there. So, in other words, you feel it's not as cohesive as some of the other records? Yeah, I don't think it's as complete an album, which is why I prefer you know. Great Southern Trend Kill, you know? Right also, on. also, Great Southern Trend Kill has Floods, and Floods has some of the most beautiful guitar playing and solos by... Um, Dime bag I've ever heard in any song ever. It has to be oh, said. Yeah. So, yeah. For that reason alone, Great Southern Twinkle just outs it for me. Um, up next, we're back to Prog. He's gone for Queen's Reich and Operation Mindcrime, an album I have never heard, unfortunately. I was just really? That. Yeah. Oh, I've, wow. Do you know what's worse? I actually interviewed um, Jeff Tate last year as well. <laughs> Damn, At Kinnery's dude. of all bloody places. Yeah, it was his solo stuff. He was um, I don't know why Queen's Wake have turned around saying he can't pull off the vocals anymore, which is why they sort of got rid of him. Because I saw that guy live. He'd done a couple of Queen's Wake songs. He can still do the bloody vocals. That was absolute bollocks. Um very, very, very nice guy. Uh, quite a laugh, actually. We had a, um, had a talk about stuff and um, end up drifting as a lot of sort of slightly political bands, uh, band members do. Um, kind of drifted to Trump. And uh, yeah, the interviews on the on this YouTube channel, go check it out, guys, because honestly, the guy's really nice and it's a really, really fun interview. So, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, definitely. But unfortunately, but- I... I've never heard that at Queensryche album. I don't even think I own oh, it. Oh, Ronnie, you've got, you got to check it out, man. It's an absolute... It, to me, it's the best thing Queensryche ever did. Yeah, it's also... I think it's got the... Uh, has it got Eyes of a Stranger on it as well? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's... Well, a, it, it actually tells a story. The whole album yeah. tells a story. And then it's... it's Because um, they released a sequel the other year, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, which I kind of wish they hadn't bothered, but hey. <laughs> too little, too late. <laughs> yeah, it just isn't that good of a record, man. Like, I don't know. Queen's Wright kind of, I love Jeff Tate, but yeah. it wasn't just because of his voice. He was kind of taking the band in a direction that, well, I don't know, quite honestly, I wasn't really big on, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, to me, they were never the same once uh, Chris DeGarmo left the band, you know. Uh, the, the combination of DeGarmo and Tate was just fucking awesome. And they were, you know, they, they just haven't been the same, in my opinion, you know. Fair enough, fair enough. And finally on a, um, M Shadow's top ten list, System of a Down, Toxicity. Now, who wants to go first on this one? What's this? Um, I personally love that album. No, um, I like the song. <laughs> you not listened to the whole album yet? 
I am woman. I am irritating. When are you going to learn this? All right, we're going to play Natalie the whole album soon. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. Ronnie and Mike know how annoying women can be. <laughs> I will um, stick with no comment on this because I'm single and I want to find a woman. So, <laughs> dude, you've always got to have a comment. I mean, I'm always bashing my gender, like with horrible comments, <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. So, trust me. That sounded fine. like your phone was trying to censor you with what you were about to say there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, now Toxic. I think I think is a wonderful album. There's um, probably like one or two songs I don't like from it, which is just a couple of the shorter ones that they do. Yeah. Um, for me, it's still one of the best System of a Down albums. One of? So you wouldn't say it's the best? But, uh, God, I'm trying to think. What's... They haven't released that many albums, I should remember. No, I've only released about album. four, and then there was the uh, weird... B sides and unreleased stuff album is still this album. Yeah, so I'm actually ashamed of myself. I don't remember the name of their albums. Give me a minute. <laughs> uh, Hypnotized, Mesmerized, Toxicity, and System of a Down. <laughs> That's it. Um, <laughs> for me, I'm, well, I'm a big fan of still this album. Do you know you're the only other person I know who actually likes that album, apart from yourself? <laughs> Fair enough. So. But, how, about, how about you, Mike? You thinking? What's your thinking on that as a best System of a Down album? Oh man, it's a goddamn good one. Type it is. is a solid fucking record. I mean, it's it's hard to argue. It's 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 really hard to argue with that. Um, you know, I don't know, man. I'd have to really, really think about it because, yeah, I I would say it's it's in my. Probably one, and then and then one A would be. Uh, uh, which one came out first, hypnotized or mesmerized? Um, I think it was mesmerized. Yeah, it'd probably be them too. But I love the first record too. The first record's killer, dude. Yeah, see, for me, killer. I would say the um, the fact the debut album is the best album for me personally. So, yeah, toxicity again, absolutely awesome. Not taking anything away from that, but. That first album, it just hit at the right time, you know, for me. So right, right, right. Yeah, I would have to sort of go with, um, definitely go with System of a Down. System of a Down is the best System of a Down album. Although we don't know what the new album's going to sound like if it ever comes out, because yeah, it I'll seems, yeah, it keeps sort of. Uh, well, I mean, they're saying. I swear, earlier this year they said they were recording it was coming out this year, and then last month yep. they've said. Oh no no, it's not coming out this year. So it's yeah, it's got to be like tall, isn't it? So <laughs> yeah, it's getting a bit ridiculous. Oh, this is interesting. I'm, I'm looking here, and they got Kerry King's uh, top ten metal albums. Oh what? Well, speak us through it, man. All right, man. Yeah. It, well, uh, he starts off with um, ACDC's Highway to Hell. Fair enough. I don't know if that's number 10, but he even said uh, a lot of my picks could have went a lot of ways. I love Power Age. I love If You Want Blood, You've Got It. All the early ACDC stuff with Bon Scott is so fucking awesome. But A Highway to Hell, besides it being Bon Scott's last album, there's just no duds on there. It's super, super polished, too. It's got maybe a darker vibe. Walk All Over You is a pretty dark song. Highway to Hell is a pretty dark song. Night Prowler is super dark. Maybe that's why it appeals to me. I don't know, but so much of that stuff is just great. Black Sabbath, Sabotage. Sabotage is just a very heavy record. There's so much good stuff on there. As I pick these records, I pick the ones I'm compelled to play if I'm working out or driving. Sabotage was my choice for Black Sabbath. It has Megalomania, Symphony Universe, which has definitely got added to Hole in the Sky, and it has the instrumental superstars. I love that one. It grips me. Well, you know, it's funny he should mention something from the universe, because in my opinion, that song's the first proto-thrash song ever recorded. Fair enough. See, for me, for Sabbath, um, I'm going to go with the first album. I have to go with the first really? album on that one, yeah. Okay. Um, first album. Yeah, I'd... Yeah, well, well, I mean, come on, dude, you know, fuck. You know, the first album's obviously landmark. It pretty much gave the birth of fucking heavy metal. Let's just be honest. With well, ourselves. yeah. Although a lot of people um, would probably... I think I've, I've heard the argument that some people said 
Cream was the beginning of heavy metal with the way they had um, amped up their guitars. Yeah, I think Cream were an influence on heavy metal for sure. Yeah. I mean, Sabbath cited Cream as a major influence. I wouldn't classify them as heavy metal band. No, they're they're but um, proto metal, sure, sure. Uh, but I mean, yeah, for me, it would probably my favorite Sabbath album would probably be Master. Fair enough, fair enough. That seems to be a... But, I mean, my, dude, usually, you can't go wrong with, especially the first five or six records. I will say, although, I actually don't mind Technical Ecstasy and and uh, Never Say Die. Especially the song Never Say Die. I fucking love that song. And not a lot of people seem to like those albums or that song. So, again, I'm the weird one. <laughs> you know, um, I actually like those records too. Um, I think... Technical Ecstasy would be my least favorite Sam, Ozzy era Sam. Record. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. It does but, have a lot of duff moments on it, but. But goddamn, man! I mean, and I think Never Say Die has some really good songs on it, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, holy shit! I think. Uh, um, oh, what's the fucking uh, Junior's Eyes? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, hard road. Uh, I mean, goddamn, just go down the list, dude. It's uh, oh, what's the other one? There's another one. There's some good songs on that that record. Yeah. I, I think anyway. Um, how about you, uh, Joe and Natalie? Your favorite Sabbath album? I'd probably say the first one. But for me, <laughs> and Natalie. Uh, I'd probably have to say the same, really. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I like the stuff after it, but nothing really compared to the first album for me. Um, for me, I, if I listen to Sabbath, it's usually the first album or Paranoid. I will admit that. Uh, sometimes yeah. Sa- um, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath gets a look in. I will admit that. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, they did make a bad <laughs> album as such. It's just <laughs> less good albums. do not really get on too well with the... Um, was it the Dio era of um, Black Sabbath? It was, for me, Dio, and I know a lot of people will disagree with this, for me, Sabbath, Dio's voice didn't quite fit Sabbath's sound. That's what I thought as well. He's a great vocalist. Well, here, here, here's my take on, on that. Um, I like the Dio era Sabbath, but it's yeah. not Black Sabbath to me. No. They should have no. changed the name of the band. They wanted to change the name of the band the fucking record companies and management and them wouldn't let them. But to me, it's like, to me, that's heaven and hell. When they got back together and that version of Sabbath got back yeah. together um, and they called themselves heaven and hell, to me, that's who they are. You know, because they, they, they weren't the same band. They just weren't. I mean, no. they were just a totally different band. So No, Black Sabbath was always about those, um, for me, have always been that band with the mournful Aussie vocals, which is why Aussie's the only vocalist for me for Black Sabbath. Um and I've heard the other vocalists, and again, Dio, they've all been great vocalists, just not right for the Sabbath sound, as it were. Right, so. well, for my money, my favourite Dio project, as much as I enjoy his Sabbath records, or Heaven and Hell, as I like to call them, and I love his solo stuff, I liked him with Rainbow Man. Yeah, I think Rising is one of the greatest albums ever recorded. Fair enough. Well, um, we've got to bring this to a close soon, but... Before I do that, we've got one last 10 favourite metal albums here. Um, Bill Ward of Black Sabbath this week, as we are on the subject, um, has released his um, 10 favourite metal albums. And what's interesting about this, I've had a quick look through, they're not, a lot of them aren't actually that old. They're, most of them are actually from this century as well. Not century, sorry, this decade. <laughs> Obviously they're coming from this century, he's not that old. Um <laughs> So, first up, he's got an album from this year at number 10. Um, a band called Dead Cross with a song, album called Dead Cross. Now, I've not heard of it's them. Actually, it's a really good album. Is it? I yeah. recommend it. Yeah. It's, uh, I have no idea what that is outside my window. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it's apparently Mike Patton with um, Dave Lombardo on the drums, by the looks of it. Yeah. But, um, Interesting. Well, really, Joe, really good album. I was going to say, you, you've heard it. Describe it to people, because I've not even heard of them. So. <laughs> um, 
kind of doomy. Oh, right. Kind of, um, if you like to do metal, um, with elements of black metal. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that sounds interesting. Um, Not what I would have expected I, from, like, Dave Lombardo. Mike Patton, fair enough. <laughs> Dave yeah, Lombardo. Um, no, I'd, I'd recommend them. Yeah, I'll have to uh, check them out. Have you heard them yet, Mike? No, I haven't. I'll have to check them out. No, no, have I. Um, in at number nine, he's got Devil Driver with Beast. Which, yeah, fair enough. I mean, um, I... I can kind of take or leave Devil Driver myself. They're not a bad band by any means. They're a very good band, but sometimes their albums don't quite gel as well for me. Um, however, having done that interview with uh, Des Farfarar the other month, um, he's a nice guy. He genuinely loves making music. He loves metal. You can tell it from the way he speaks in that interview and everything. You can tell he believes fully in what he's doing with Devil Driver. And um, like I said, they come out with the uh, odd good album, good song. So, yeah, Beast here at number nine. How are you guys with Devil Driver? I like uh, Devil Driver. I like, so I like some of their stuff. Yeah, I yeah. do too. I'm not the biggest fan of them. No, it's... Um, I don't know why. That's the thing. It's like some of the songs... I'm loving the riffs and all that and the vocals, but it's not quite, you know... Give me that next level of loving it, I think is the best way I can put it. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, number eight, and Bill, I love you. Fear Factory, Mechanized. He's got a Fear Factory album in his top ten. The drummer who invented metal loves a Fear Factory album. I'll let you guys speak about this first before I go off on one. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it. Quick and simple, because I'm sure Ronnie wants to go into it. I just love this album. <laughs> yep, go on. Oh, that um, yeah, I love yeah. Fear Factory. To me, they're another band that's never really put out a bad record. Mechanized is a solid record. and Who am I to argue with the great Bill Ward? Come on. Exactly. Although, I will say this, just a quick sort of offshoot. It is a, sh it is a shame that he never got to play the farewell tour with Sabbath. Oh, yeah, it fucking sucks. Big demon cock, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that was not really a proper farewell tour without Bill Ward. He didn't even get to do nope. one show, or one song, which was... You thought he could have come out for the, at least one or two songs on their last gig, really. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, Joe, yeah, was that, that, was that literally all you said? <laughs> I was going to let you just go off on one, so I knew you really want to. Um, well... I might have a slight love of this band, um, but really, just a slight one. Um, now, Mechanize <laughs> um, was the first album we had from Fear Factory after a bit of a three-year gap, if I remember rightly. And here's the thing: I, for those of you who've watched my ranked, uh, not ranked, did, was it ranked? I've done it in. Yeah, it was ranked. So I do a series called Ranked on this channel on YouTube, and I've done the Fear Factory albums. And as many of you know, Mechanized one of the albums I put under my top five albums. Because again, not a bad album, but on this album, as much as I love Fear Factory, I love them because they have a lot of the industrial elements and that come into it. And this kind of missed some of that on some of the songs. So I, um, I love the album, but I didn't think it was one of their best. Um, I would have gone with Genexus myself or Demanufacture. Or, um, no, probably one of them two albums, to be honest with you. Um, but the other, thing, other reason to love this album is this is probably one of my favourite sort of lineups of Fear Factory because it, it was not only Burton C. Bell and um, Dino Cazares. We had two members of Strapping Young Lad in the band as well. We had Bleeding Gene Hoagland on drums. One of the gods of drumming. Like, seriously, that guy's amazing. And um, Byron Stroud on bass. That is the ultimate Fear Factory lineup for me. As much as I love the Demanufacture lineup, I mean, come on, Strapping Young Lad meets Fear Factory. You can't go wrong if you love your industrial metal. So, yeah, I'm glad you put Fear Factory album on there. I want to pick this album myself. Not going to go on for too much longer about this, but yeah, that's in at number eight. Number seven is a band I've never heard, and I feel really bad about it. Because I'm going to get a lot 
I imagine I'm about to be schooled here by one of you two. One of you three, sorry. And in at number seven, we've got Christian and Southern Storm. I've never heard of them. Never have I. You've never heard of Christian? I've never heard of them, but I'm not familiar with them. Oh, fair enough. I think they're kind of a thrash metal meets black metal band, by the sounds of it. I'll have to check them out. Number six, yeah. oh, number six, I fully agree with this. Um, one of the bands, one of the ultimate goth bands, Typo Negative, October Rust. What an album. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what an album. Rest in peace, Peter Steele. Indeed, indeed. Um, what would you say there, sorry, Joe? It's a wonderful album. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. This and Bloody Kisses, if you've never heard Typo Negative, start with those two albums, seriously. Um... If you like your music dark and gothy, you got to fall in love with Typo Negative. And if you're female, possibly the singer's schlong. <laughs> but yeah, October Rust, I mean, you got my girlfriend's girlfriend on there, Red Water, and this, just lightning in a bottle, this album. Absolutely superb. Um, have you guys got anything you want to sort of add to that, really? What was I sorry? <laughs> Uh, you got you got anything you want to add to that about this album? Uh, uh, I don't know, I just mean, absolutely love it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Stone Cold Classic, man. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, in at number five, because everyone's got to have a Motorhead album on their top ten. Um, he's got the world is yours, which. I can't remember that well, that album, to be honest with you. Well, again, Motorhead's one of those bands that never really put out a bad record. No, this is true. I mean, they're what unfortunately ended up being their last album. Um, I fucking loved it. I thought it was them on, like, full-on cylinders for the first time in a little while, really. Um, Others may disagree with that, but yeah, Motorhead, can't go wrong with it, really. Um, Nope. I feel like I'm cutting you, t- you guys off. Sorry, if you want to sort of catch up here. <laughs> no, it's cool, man. Uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm just kind of watching the clock, dude. i got to get started in less than an hour. Yeah, so I'll not say so speed off if we do. Um, Ian and I'm four, Jesus Priest. He's gone for a bleeding best off. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, That's cheating, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it, if Bill Ward says it does, I guess it does. Yeah, he's gone <laughs> the best yeah, in the very... Best but, Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, to me, a compilation. Technically, compilation albums don't count, but if Bill Ward says it counts, who am I to fucking argue with? Well, yeah, fair, maybe maybe it's because he could decide on just one Judas Priest album, which is fair enough. Um, in at number three, uh, he's gone for Slipknot and Five, the Grey Chapter. Not a fan of this mm. album. Not a fan of this album. Although I didn't realise it was three years old already. Is it really? Yeah, apparently come out 2014. I thought it only came out a couple of years ago. Jesus. Yeah, it's it's kind of part of the... I don't really want to use the word decline, but for me it's kind of the decline of Slipknot a bit, that album. Along with um, the album before it, I can't remember the name of even though I said it hope earlier. Yeah, thank you, all hope is gone. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not even to do with like the performances and that. They're all great. It's just the album just doesn't do anything for me. Apart from the singles did. I got really excited when I heard the singles. Then I heard the whole album and went, ah, you've released the best songs. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Devil Inside is a great song. I will admit that. But Do you mean The Devil and I? That's it, yeah. <laughs> Devil Inside is a bloody horror film. Never <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't that horror film. That's not a good horror film. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I've never actually seen it. So <laughs> but yeah, it's not that good. Don't watch it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, in at number two, he's got the Black Album by Metallica. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. And he's called it... On a lot of people's list. I yeah, mean... he's, he's called it Metallica's... Um, Version of uh, Sergeant Pepper by the Beatles. He thinks it's that significant. 
A lot of people do. I don't, but hey, <laughs> man. Like I said, my opinion's in the minority. Yeah, yeah. Something me and you both have in, uh, in common there, Mike. Our opinions generally end up being the minority, man. <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, I mean, I mean, for me, it would be Master of Puppets or one of the Cliff Burton albums. It, it wouldn't be the Black Album. But yeah, see, I, would hey, have thought, I thought you would have gone for, like, Master of Puppets because, well, because of the drumming on it or something like that, you know? The drumming on a Black Album, it's it suits the songs well, but the songs are a little bit slower. So it's a bit strange, really, that he's gone for that. Um... And in at number one, Sabbath, because of course it's got to be Sabbath, because he was in them. <laughs> but he said that his favourite Sabbath album is Master of Reality. Fucking A, Bill knows what's up. <laughs> uh, because he loves, uh, he really likes Children of the Grave because of the groove of it. And he's really happy with how the album come out with Into the Void and Sweet Leaf. Admittedly, yeah, it's got Sweet Leaf on it. Fair enough. Um... And yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. Born of this world. Sweetly. Fucking in the void. Children of the grave. That fucking album rules, man. <laughs> but like I said, it, it really was sad as early albums especially. They're all interchangeable. Yeah. You could say volume four and I agree with you. You could say fucking <laughs> Paranoid or, or the first album. And it, I mean, you know, but then again, you're talking about my all-time favorite band. I mean, the Ozzy era of Sabbath is it as far as I'm concerned. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the uh, end of the podcast. So before we go, um, Natalie and Joe, what are you up to for the next week or two? Work. Um, <laughs> I'm unemployed, so I'll be at home playing with Joe's uh, Nintendo Switch. I was going to say, for the, I was gonna say, for the love of God, end that sentence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Mike, obviously you're doing your show in about 45 minutes. What else have you got coming up this week, man? Um, well, I got my show, and then I'm off for the next couple of days. I go back to work Monday. Yeah. Uh, supposed to be recording. I hope I'll be recording another episode of the Mind Over Metal podcast with DJ Mac, who yep. is on the air right now on that metalstation.com. <laughs> um, and, um,. That's about it, really. I was going to uh, finish off this it's a pretty interesting list. I'm not going to go into detail, but like I, uh, Kerry King's list was ACDC Highway to Hell, yep. Black Sabbath Sabotage, Exodus is Bonded by Blood, hmm. pretty solid list so far, yeah. Iron Maid Number of the Beast, Judas Priest Stained Class, um, Merciful Fate Melissa, uh, Master of Puppets by Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne's Diary of a Madman and Rainbow's Ro Lo Long Live Rock and Roll, and then he ended it with Black Metal by Venom. Oh, it's a pretty solid fucking list, that man. That really is, yeah, yeah. Hmm. He's, um... I, mean, I was like, man. I was like, because Gary goes, well, I thought about picking a Slayer song, but you know, I just thought that'd be kind of uh, arrogant, self-serving. So, well, you know, Bill Ward you know, didn't I mean, give a toss. <laughs> Right, yeah, don't work like fuck you, I'm Bill Ward. <laughs> oh dear. Well, one, you should probably get Mike, uh, not Mike, sorry, uh, James to invite me to the podcast. <laughs> and anyway, I will say thank you too. The Wiley Metal Mike, you can catch his show. Well, Mike, I'll let you plug his show yourself, man, since you're here. Friday night, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't really know what time that is. Uh, midnight. GMT. It'll be midnight GMT. Um, so there you go. Midnight GMT every. So in England, I'm on all night, folks. Indeed. Come on by. <laughs> Indeed. And I want to say thank you to Mike and a big thank you to Natalie and Joe. Hopefully they'll be joining us. All three of them will be joining us again for another podcast. And next yeah, time. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Yeah, definitely. Nice meeting you, Natalie and Joe. And you. And you. And hopefully we'll next time. Sometime. Yeah, and definitely. And then we have to learn about albums before next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, next well, time. You did fine, sweetheart. You did fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, you did. You yeah, did you. indeed. You um, you knew not to sort of try and bluff it either. So that's always good. <laughs> Well, that's always the best way to go. You exactly. know, don't ever try to bluff your way through it because then you you, you end up looking like a poser, man. And 
fuck all that shit, you know? If you don't know, you don't know. Exactly. And just because you don't know doesn't mean it makes you a poser. Again, it all depends on when you came into metal and how old you are. And that was something I had to get through my fucking stubborn head. Because for a long time, like I said, I'd just like rip on this album. And then when I'd have people, well, you got to understand that was my first metal album. That was my first metallic album. I'm like, okay, now I get it. Yeah. Now I get it. You know, it's like, I get it. I get where you're coming from. But, by the same token, you got to understand where I'm coming from. As oh. somebody who was a fan of that band from pretty much almost the beginning. And, on, yeah. and on that note, yeah. I will say thank you guys for uh, listening and getting through this. Um, as usual, I'll probably have split this into two parts so you can listen to each part individually. Benedict, I know you've listened to this. Hopefully, dude, we'll have you back with us next week or next time we do this. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Natalie, Joe, Mike, and we shall see you next time on the Psycho Slim Podcast. Also, don't forget to check out my radio show every Sunday from um, 2 p.m. GMT, 9 a.m. EST, on thatmetalstation.com. Keep it heavy, people. Stay metal. And we are done. Uh,